Let's assemble the bag. So we want to start by making the front and back panels. So there's a seam that runs through the front and the back. And we're going to apply a flat piping or a peeper piping um, just to break up the seam. Just lay a folded piece of um, contrast fabric, raw edges to raw edges, and stitch along the half inch stitching line on one of the panels. It doesn't matter whether you start with the top panel or the bottom panel, it doesn't matter. See, it's just flat. And we're going to sandwich that piece of paper piping or flat piping in between the on the seam. So let's just trim the the um, flat piping to to length, and then place our top back panel on top of there. And we're just going to clip or pin that into place, trying to keep the stripes visually straight. One reason we've put this stripe across or this piece of contrast across is to help with actually not having to match the stripes going across that seam, but still having the effect of the stripes running through the body of the back of the handbag or shoulder bag. So I'm just manipulating that so as that my stripes look pseudo straight. Right. And with the front, we're just putting the top panel onto the bottom panel. The bottom panel is plain because we have a pocket going over top of that. Match our ends. Now this flat piping can go up or down, depending on what you want. Make sure you put the other side of the magnetic closure on that top panel before going too much further, if you haven't done it already. So that's how this is going to look. Let's just stitch this piping into position, sandwiching it between the two layers, and we're stitching on the left hand side of the perimeter stitching line. Right, so that's very simple. Open the seam up, let's just check to make sure we don't see any stitching. Turn it over and press that seam open, press it with the piping either up or down, whatever suits. We've got ours going up. Laying our pocket on top of the bottom panel of, sorry, I've, actually I've got it on the wrong side of this one. You'll see when I come to stitch it, I should be, have it on the other side. should be on the other um, panel but you'll get the idea when that's on you want to have that so as the the panel's got a bit of a bow in it so we move it in as far as we can from the edge of the seam allowance without getting a, a buckle or too much fullness just so as it's got a slight bow in it to put your hand right can you see that i've got the right panel on below now and we're just stitching within the seam allowance long stitch to machine base those all those layers together and you will see that i've it's sitting in from the edge of the the base on the seam allowance so as that it just gives a little bit of fullness on that blue pocket because when that is attached to the side gusset that little bit of fullness will be actually soaked up. If you don't have it, that underneath panel will actually rumple up and increase underneath that top top pocket opening. Um, it looks awful. So we're just going to undo that that um, basting stitch around the edge. Right. So we're going to make our uh, join our side pieces in our gusset. You will notice that I haven't actually put the tab on top of the side panels here because um well i've actually done these seams um before i did this um i should have actually just left these two seams until last because i need to use the side panel with the little top tabs with the d-rings as my pattern piece for my lining so you'll just have to 
imagine you haven't seen this. So the these seams get sewn together after you've cut your lining and added the tab on top. And we're just sitting, we're stitching on the left hand side of the perimeter stitching line. You can cut this all in one piece if you wanted to as far as the lining goes. If you wanted to cut the gusset all in one piece you can do. All you need is the centre line. You need a centre point. So here we are putting our loop, we've threaded the D-ring onto a loop and it's sitting about half an inch below the perimeter stitching line and we're just going to machine base within the seam within the seam allowance just to keep that in position then we're going to add we're going to trim off the tails of these loops and then we're going to add a tab on top so as that this um d-ring sits down within the panel rather than being at the top of the panel okay so there's rather than this bit rather than finishing like this we're going to actually put a little section above this and sandwich this loop in between this little section. Just for a different finish, just a, yet another different way of doing stuff. Let's make sure that sits in position. Okay, so that's gonna sandwich that, make sure that the uh, D-ring is right down, that you're not gonna stitch over it. Put a piece of washi tape on it if you, if you want to secure it a bit more. And we're just gonna stitch onto the left hand side of the um, perimeter stitching line so basically in between those two lines of stitching that you can see that's what I call a uh, an ample half inch seam or a generous half inch seam so stitch all the way through those little tabs are um, embroidered uh, with the the base um, section um, when you're doing your um, making your panels. So there we go, that's sandwiched in that seam. Push all your seams towards the left hand side and then I'm just actually going to stitch all those layers down. So the bulk of the seam allowance is going towards the left and we're just stitching across there again for more security. You could do that a couple of times if you wanted. If you didn't want to do that seam, Restitch the original seam again so as it's nice and secure over that loop. Right, there we go. That's our side panel done. And as I said before, you need to use that joined on there to actually cut these side panels for your lining, otherwise it won't fit. Right. We've cut our lining, we've put some interfacing at the top of the lining piece, you can see the interfacing there, and we fold that panel in half to find the center mark at the base of the uh, front or back panel. And this is the um, lower base panel. Again, we want to find the center mark of this because we need to match our gusset to it. So our base panel, and we're going to sew our sides and create one long strip. Okay, so as you can see, on the backs, I've got interfacing at the top. Six or seven centimetres, doesn't matter, there's not, not a particular measurement. Just to give it a bit of, of um, strength at the top edge of your shoulder bag. Now this, we're going to join all these panels together. Remember, the narrow edge is the top edge, which has got the interfacing on it, of course. The difference between those two in ends on the side pieces will be it's about a centimetre, three-eighths of an inch. Okay, so there's your long strip. And that, turn that round, that's going to be our gusset that goes around our bag. So we need to stitch those seams, open them up. And on this this panel, the, the, this base gusset panel, I've stitched a half inch um, stay stitch around the whole piece. So because we need to clip into this at, in our next stage, best to actually stitch around there so as you know what you're doing, it secures any cuts and nicks. So 
I place the straight sides. I put three pins or three clips along the straight sides so I match the tops. I'll put a couple of clips in. Get the straight sections in place first. And then snip, snip, snip. About um, three eighths to a half an inch apart. Half an inch apart's fine. Just around the curved area. And then we just push those clipped edges out to the edge of the panel. And they will stitch around perfectly. You'll stitch just inside the um, stitching of the um, stay stitching. And we've only clipped just to the stay stitching, so it's quite safe. We're not going to have any surprises, any holes, any rips. This technique for making the lining up is exactly the same technique as we'll be using to make up the outside back shell. We make sure our straight areas are sitting correctly first. Now we'll do our snipping. And it's from the beginning of the curve to the finish of the curve of the underpiece. They don't have to, the clips don't have to be close together. Every, every half an inch is fine. We have measured and planned these seams out perfectly, so they have to fit. If you've got your seam allowance of, of your half inch seam allowance added onto your blocks, they will fit. Now we stitch. We're going to stitch just onto the inside of the stitching. Yep, to the left hand side of the stitching. So my needle is just literally sliding along the side. There shouldn't be any worry about any pleats forming. The pleats should not form at all. The ple a pleat can't form past that, that stay stitching line. So as long as your needle is just scuffing the left hand side of the stay stitching line, you should be absolutely fine to stitch this without too much effort. Don't worry if your curves and your corners are not absolutely perfectly curved or if you've got a little bit of a wobbly stitch. No one is going to see that. Right, coming up the home straight. Finished. I think that's a nice curve. There's no pleats, there's no puckers, sitting nicely. Right, on to the other side. So, we've got our center mark. If you haven't got it, check. Now, what we want to do is we want to mark around about, well I'm going to say 6 inches, 5 inches, 6 inches out from the center, so 3 inches from either side of that center mark. We need to leave a gap in the bottom to actually pull the bag through. So, let's just pin all this together, or clip all this all together, but then we'll come back and we'll actually not um, sew that bottom section. That'll be just turned through and double and stitched, edge stitched, closed once we have finished the um, the shoulder bag. Okay, so there we have our hole. Yep. And so we match the straight section. Just like we did with the other side. But we're just going to stop short across the base seam. OK, 
Okay, let's just get that into position. Then we're going to flip this over so as we can clip. Okay. Right, so straight section, straight section, base section, and we need to clip into our seam like we did with it for the other side, exactly the same half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. I've got a little bit more than half inch there. Must have been feeling generous. And just clip into position ready for sewing. Right. Press those seams open along those four corner seams. And there we have a little hole. So for the bag, it's the same thing. We're wanting to find, um, we're wanting to find um, the uh, centerpiece and then we're wanting to cut the uh, snip into the corners. Just ignore the, um, the fact that I've got a, a step at the top of that seam from there. I recorded this before putting those little pieces on. Same method. This sits really, really nice to sew actually. It sits very, very well. We're going to be sewing in between those two stitching lines. So I'm showing you more so here about, about doing those corners because that's really, really important. Okay, so that sits nicely. Then we can stitch those and then we do the other side. And you can see I've added that top strip on from there because I've, I've, um, I forgot about that to start off with. And those top edges are even. And then we stitch that on in the same manner. Check all our seams, check our curves, restitch the curves if you want. And then just trim back around the curve, back to a quarter of an inch on the fullness of the curve. You don't have to trim it back all the way around, just take those curves off. Just a quarter of an inch at the fullness of the corner of the curve. Do that on both sides. And then we can go and push a shape into those corners and press those out. And press those base seams flat. Or we'll sandwich them together. You can, so as it's actually got something to sit on. Yeah, you don't want those seams open. But it should sit by itself quite nicely. Turn it back inside out, ready. So we're going to turn it back inside out. So as the outside, so we're working on the, the insides. On the inside, you can see my, my little side pieces have joined. We want to add our flap to this now. So with the back, so it's the zipper there, so that's the zipper side, so that's the back. So we want to slip our flap in and match it from seam to seam. Okay, match it from seam to seam. If your flap is slightly smaller, then make sure that it is centred along that seam. So if it's not quite um, the full width, then make sure that it's uh, centred so as that you have a a gap of the same distance either side of the flap, it does not matter, but it should fit. So there we have, we have one, two, th that's just clipped along there, and yep, so there we are, make sure it's the right side, and we're just going to stitch along that, um, the, the half inch along that line. I actually stitched my lining to my flap before, um, before starting to use it because I don't I like to have a seam guide to uh, to follow <clears throat> otherwise that you wouldn't see that seam on this side I just stitched all those layers together with the flap together at the top the lining of the flap has got interfacing on it too so it gives a bit more fortitude there we go so Okay, 
coming along there. Right, so flap is into position. Turn it through. Right, so that's sitting correctly. Ready for the last stage. So we're going to slip our bag. So we've turned our. I'm just going to show you that again a little bit easier. Turn that through so as you're happy with it and that is pressed and everything is in its final position. Just make sure you're happy with the whole thing. And then we're going to slide it inside the lining that we've made. Put the hole in the bottom of it. Doesn't matter which side that hole goes to, just slide it so the lining is inside out and the bag is right side out. And we're going to slide our bag inside our lining and we're going to pin or clip our four corners at the top. Seam on seam to take time. This is a cute little set the um with the three pieces. Just tuck those little D-rings in. We don't want any surprises when we're stitching around the top. Okay, so we're stitching around there. I like stitching from the inside because it's actually a little bit easier to see on the machine. And we're just stitching to the left hand side of the original um, perimeter stitching line again. Open those seams up as we go. They have been pressed open lightly. Um, well, a little bit more than lightly in there, but with all the layers they do tend to close. And when you keep on um, turning your bag inside out, which I've been, because I've been taking photographs for the notes as well, um, everything becomes a little bit unpressed looking, uh, but a final press will sort that out. Really enjoyed um, getting this project together for you. Um, the three pieces are very complimentary, a bit of fun, a little bit different having lemons and the design lens for you to put your own sweet pea design that you have from another collection actually in place of the uh, lemon design. You don't even have to do the heavy stripes um, on the satin stitch, the, out, out, the triple stitch on the outside is a separate step so that can give you your um, quilting to keep your layers together and you can actually add something else in its place of the lemons and it will be interesting to see what people do with the this project it's quite fun the bag is actually quite a decent size considering we're using the three the six by ten hoop now we have that sits around the top we want to berth the bag by bringing it through the lining hole which we left. Right, make sure there's no surprises, no pleats, no gaps, no stitching showing.
And at the end, we're just going to put some clips or pins along the edge of that and just, I'm going to machine stitch those two layers together. No need to hand stitch them, you can machine stitch them. Okay, so that will stitch along the edge of there. And then let's just give this a little bit of a, a press before we tuck the lining back down inside the bag. And then we want to press that top edge, which is quite strong because we've got quite a few layers there. So just manhandle it firmly. It can stand, withstand it. I find it easier to actually roll the lining in. I find it easier to do it this way rather than turning the actual bag inside out again. Right. So that top edge we could actually put a row of stitching along that top edge and then to stop the lining from shifting, which I will do. Just checking this out. Just needs a final press, really. Yep, stitch along the top there. And you'll see, yes, it'll have just stitched along the top there. Sorry, it was not very clear. I've just stitched along the front and um, it just stops that lining from coming out. Great project, love doing it. Mm -hmm.